our guest. I said, Bishop, and I put it this way, because it's hard when I say no. If I asked you to play a song for my wife, would you do it? <laughs> He's a bishop, and you ask like that, how can I say no? So, Bishop Ralph Dunnicage is coming to play a song. And ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Carl, let's receive Bishop Ralph Dunnicage.
have given it to thine hands, Jericho. And the kings thereof is mighty in the valley. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go around the city once. Thus shalt thou do for six days. Let's say six days. Six days. Seven priests shall bear forth the ark of seven trumpets of the rams of the horns. And the seventh day, the ark, seven trumpets or seven horns, and then the seventh day, you shall go past the city seven times. If I say seven times. Seven times. And the priest shall blow the horn, and it shall come to pass when they make a loud burst with the ram's horn, and when they hear the sound of the trumpet, and all the people shall shout, a great shout, I'm about to say a great shout, and the walls of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend every man straight before him. We'll start to just jump down just a few verses. These are the instructions that were given to him. Verse 15 picks it up when we actually take place. It says, it came to pass on the seventh day that there rose early about dawn of the day. And compassed the city the same manner seven times. Only that day they compassed the city seven times because they were obedient. And it came to pass the seventh time that the priest blew the trumpet. And Joshua said unto the people, shout. For the Lord has given you the city. For the Lord has given you the city. Uh, the Lord has given you the city. Hallelujah. Uh, Find your hands with me for a moment of prayer. Eternal and always, Father, once again that we come before your presence, thanking you for this time of preaching. This time of preaching. We would, God, that you would give us articulation of speech and clarity of thought. That your word goes forth in the power and the demonstration of the Holy Ghost. Now, Holy Spirit, make our hearts and minds receptive to the word of God that shall be sown into our lives tonight. We make the declaration right now that we are the better because you have sent your word. And your word has healed us and delivered us from all matters of sickness and disease. Father, we thank you for it. God, we do now pray this prayer. In the Baptist name of Jesus. The Christ, the name that causes convulsions in hell, the name that causes cancer not to go into remission but to dry up. It's in that awesome name that causes blood sugar to regulate. That name we're praying in tonight. We believe it and we count it down. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. We're certainly grateful for this word tonight. And I want to, I want to. Definitely look at your theme text tonight as well in the book of Acts. The book of Acts, it talks about it. Acts chapter 2. I've been reading and seeing that you are in this vein. I'm so glad to hear because we've been doing a teaching on the Holy Spirit. And then the Bible says in chapter 2, verse, verse 1 of Acts, it says, When the day of Pentecost is fully come, they are all with one accord in one place. It came from heaven as a sound of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled all of the house. And everybody that was there, they were all filled with the Spirit, they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave their utterance. For my short topic tonight, I want you to look over somebody and say, Neighbor, Neighbor. we're going to get it done. We're going to get it done. Yeah. Just for a subtopic, look at somebody and say, it happened when I hollered. Look at somebody on the other side and say, it happened when I hollered. When I hollered. It's something about, now I, 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 I'm, I'm going to have to move right into this because I see right now that you all are about ready to do something that's going to cause walls to come down. And that's hollering. There's something about the praise of God. David declared that I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. 
But along with our subject tonight, it says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. So not only is praise something that I do individually, but when we come together collectively, there ought to be a charge in the room that is uh, that is punished by the Holy Ghost. That when you walk in, I don't care what's going in your life, praise begins to take precedence. Yeah. Well, it is again. There's something about this praise that the Lord has given unto us, because the Bible says that He inhabits the praises of His people. In other words, say he lives down in our praise. And I don't know about you, but I've been in some tight spots where I couldn't do anything. Didn't have the money to make it work out. Didn't have the resource to make it come to pass. But God put something down on the inside of me that she could see money or favor that anybody on this earth could give me. He gave me a praise. And it's something about when I come into the presence of God, something like in this particular setting tonight, that when we come together, my praise ought to be able to make something happen, even when I'm going through. Oh God, look at somebody say, your praise ought to do something. And I'm just convinced that as we live in this life, you'll find yourself in one of three places. In the beginning of something, going into something, in the middle of something, or coming out of something. I don't care how loud, where you are, you're going to find yourself in one of three places. Okay, we've been real about it today. Huh? Some of us sitting here right now dealing with some things right now. Oh God, anybody dealing with something? I just want to make sure I got the right crowd tonight. Because I want to give you the word that's going to help you come out of it. But if you don't have the right brain, the enemy will take your silence as you don't know what's going on. Uh, uh, uh. So look over the songs, I ain't going to say that then, huh? Until the right time, until the right time. We're going we to get there in just a minute. Huh? But now when I begin to talk about praise, it, it's praise that has delivered folk out of things that they didn't know they were coming out of. I, I can remember them vividly standing in a room in a hospital, huh? and the doctor gives a bad report, and before I know it, the saints of old begin to say, well, thank God. Huh? Because something on the inside begins to rest. That if the enemy is sinning, uh, God is in control. Yeah. Do I have a witness in here? Huh? Do you think say the enemy may have brought it? But God is in control. God is in control. God is in control. Yeah. And so what I like about this thing, and we begin to understand it, and we have to gravitate to it, that, that when we look at this book of jo uh, the book of Joshua, around the sixth chapter, Joshua now finds himself in a predicament that he has to know some things. And the things that he has to know is going to take him a little further than, than he has to go, the place that he has to go. And Joshua finds himself now wanting to know if God is really with him. And now this is understandable because Joshua is the apprentice of Moses. Uh, Joshua was there when he was the, the law was given to Moses. Joshua was there uh, coming down off the mountain and they noticed that there was a different sound that was coming out of the camp. Joshua was there. Uh, but it's nothing like knowing God for yourself. Can I get a witness up in here? Uh, because even though grandma knows uh, and even though daddy and mama may know it, until you get a relationship with So now Joshua has to know this, and the Bible starts off with this book of Joshua says, As I was with Moses, so am I with you. And so now I want somebody to understand today that it might get dark on it, it may look a little dismal right now, that as long as God was with Grandma, a mama, a daddy, he's the same God that's with you right now. Can I get a witness of this here? And so what Joshua had to find out, and this is what I like about it, Joshua is a different kind of leader. I think if I had to look back, Joshua had to come up in the time that we came up. Because when the leaders would tell us something, we move on. But now we live in an age where if the leader says something, it has to be questioned. Where are the times when the leader said move, they said move. And they move. Where are the times when the leader called prayer, the prayer altar was completely full. Where are the days, Joshua, that when the preacher would call for all night prayer service, people would be in it. Can I work with it just a little bit? Joshua Moses is different. Uh -huh. Moses was a little bit more subtle and laid back. Uh -huh. 
the Joshua was in your face leadership. Oh God. Moses said, Moses said, okay, they want water, he hits the rock. Joshua said, if you want water, you better dig wells yourself. Come on and talk to me up in here. What did you make say? That's the Joshua generation. Joshua, Joshua was different kind of leader. Joshua, Joshua said, okay, we're going to, Moses said, we're going to bring everybody out. But Joshua gets to a place and says, after me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So this thing, even though it's collective, it has to start out individually. See, I can't help nobody until the Lord has helped me. Do I have a witness up in here? And God has a way of strengthening you. When everybody else has walked away, God has a way of stepping in and saying, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Say they rest to God, I serve. Trust him now, trust him now. Before he gets to the wall, he has an encounter. With an angelic being. Meet him. This is, this is what blows me away from the text. He says, He said, Are you for us? Or are you against us? He says, I ain't come with neither or, but I come with instruction. What we got to understand in this day of the sin hour of the church is that when God gives an instruction, He means for us to carry it out. Okay, okay, let me help you. Just like when they were preparing to go to the upper room, uh, he gives them an instruction, but they had it within themselves to decide whether or not they wanted to do it. So he says, now go to the upper room and tarry there until you be endowed with power. Now, uh, uh, conversely, uh, we may look at it today and some folks would have said, well, I ain't got to go up there. Uh -huh. God works in my house uh -huh. like he works over there. But those were not the instructions. The instructions were to go into one place, get with one accord, so that the breath of Jesus prayed, Father, make them one as we are one. Come on and talk to me. Look at the say the oneness of God. Joshua, and then we're going to finish up uh, with uh, this, this New Testament church. Uh, but when he begins to talk to him, y'all say something to me here. Uh, he said, now what I need you to do is, I'm going to give you instructions uh, on how to make walls come down in your life. Uh, and I believe I'm in a room tonight uh, that each and every one of us uh, have encountered some walls. Uh, but I got good news for you tonight. Uh, Now wait a minute. 
man and watch this. He didn't say you had to understand. He said you had to move. But can I be real with you? Because according to the Old Testament text, some of us have been operating in witchcraft. Because the Bible says disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft. I can't get no help in here. Now some of you in here today that God has given you an instruction tonight walls are coming down. He says to him, Joshua, here are the instructions. Six days, I want you to march around the city. Don't say nothing. Because what I want to do is I want to confuse your enemy. Because when we think things are not going our way, the first thing we want to do, Bishop, is put our mouth on it. Can you imagine how these men of war, some of them, must have failed when they say go into battle, but don't take your sword. But don't take your arm. Set your vibes to me that some of the battles that I'm going to fight in life, I can't beat them with a gun. Can I get a witness in here? Some of the battles that I'm going to deal with, y'all look at today and say, you're going to deal with some stuff that money can't get you out of. Yeah. <laughs> 
wait till I give you command. He said, there's some spiritual things that have to be in place. The ark had to be in the right place. Because had not the ark been in place, there's no presence of God. And so when God is saying, oh my God, there's some of you in here right now. Can I just talk to you like I'm feeling it? The enemy told you it was over. But you got something in place that you can lift your hands that identifies with what God is saying. That's some of you right this very moment that the enemy is whispering in your ear, saying, throw in the towel. But your spirit man said, don't say that. Don't say that to me.
Elijah. He said, now, because they kept me quiet so long, everything in the city, it belongs to
We got to be with one accord. We in one place. I believe we in one spirit. So what's about to happen is God is getting ready to break some. God is about to give ear to some walls that would not come down. I tell you, I know you've been struggling with it. I know you've been dealing with it. But tonight, 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 a holy company is about to come down. So what happened? He said, he said this, he said, that when they begin to shout, God gives walls that have no ears, ears to hear what the Spirit was saying. So I know your problem might be physical, but God's getting ready to call it his own Somebody say, hey, it's going to come over here. It's about to come over here. Heal me, I feel it, I feel it. Heal me, it's here tonight. Right on this right hip right here. Somebody's experiencing pain. You have to heal it right there. Y'all pray, God. Cause of the one 
oneness that is in his churches, his organization. I hear words coming from eyes that I see. Ears have not heard. Neither have they entered into the heart of the man. The great thing that God has in store. Oh, but it didn't stop there. But to those of us who believe, it has been revealed. Hey, I just look like this today. 